In today's video, I'll show you an example of what trading the S&P 500 looks like with our volatility box models. In today's video in particular, we'll compare and contrast the scalper futures volatility box models with the stock hourly volatility box models, which support SPY. So if you're a futures trader or you trade SPX, it's the futures volatility box that you're using. If you trade equities or ETFs, including SPY, QQQ, etc., oftentimes it might be the stock models that you're trading in addition to other equities. So let's compare and contrast the two volatility models to see what the differences are between each asset class. Now I'm going to start the day off actually with the morning so we can set the stage before we take a look at the period of volatility. Now, early in the morning, we had price action inside of the S&P get close to breaching our volatility box models. And after that, we saw very quickly buyers step in. So very clearly here, even if you do classify this as a breach, very easy to see that we have strength with buyers here. The models are being supported, gives you confidence that anytime we hit our cyan line, we're looking to buy. Anytime we hit our cyan line on the upper side, we're looking to get short. That's the overall idea. Now the next hour comes through, this is the 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific hour, and you'll see price action doesn't hit either side's cyan lines. The next hour comes in, same thing, we get close, but not enough. Now we go through the lunchtime hour chop, after the lunchtime hour, so so far all the way up until 11 a.m. today, so before the last two hours of the market, we have yet to see any kind of volatility that we can take advantage of in the S&P. Then comes the 11 to 12 p.m. Pacific hour and take a look at what happens in that hour. We have a sell off and that sell off takes us straight into our volatility box models, triggering us into a long side entry. Now we need to see if our setup rules are met. It's a very simple setup. All we're looking for is two things. One price action needs to breach these cyan lines. That tells us we officially have a volatility edge now that the S&P has crossed its volatility models. In step two, we would like to see this edge signal confirmation, this green arrow. That tells us we're officially now in oversold territory, looking for buyers to step in. The entry is at the cyan entry line. Stop is outside of the clouds. The distance risk, which in the case of the S&P was a little shy of 8.5 points, is what we're going for for our first target, meaning a target on the upper end of 68.53. That was T1. T2 is this great target line that you see plotting on the other side, which in the case of the S&P was good for 10.25 points. So the first trade was good for T1, which is the exact amount you risk, 8.5. T2, 10.25 points in the S&P. So that was the long side trade setup here. What's interesting with the S&P is as we hit that T2, we then triggered into the other side cyan lines, triggering us into a short side entry that we're looking for. So same exact setup. Step one, breach of our cyan line. That happens with this green arrow. Step two, edge signal confirmation. That happens with this red arrow right here at 11.51 a.m. Pacific. After that, you can see price chops around the sign entry line, giving you opportunities to enter. The risk reward are the same. It's the same hour, 8.5 points for the first target, 10.25 points for the second target. And you'll see this trade also goes to hit both T1 and T2 with this leg down lower. That's the volatility we see in the S&P. The rest of the day, we end up chopping around into the close until we see that rally in the final 15 minutes. So 11 to 12 p.m. Pacific hour is where we had the volatility today. And you can see that with the ES futures. You can see that with the micro ES futures. And you can see that with SPX. All three are supported with the futures volatility box models. Now let's take a look at what SPY looked like with our stock volatility box models. And these are the stock hourly models. The two are different. If you primarily focus on indices, you'll find the futures volatility box models to actually be a better fit. That's if you don't trade equities, you focus on just the index markets, you have five different futures volatility box models available to you to adapt to the volatility. And you'll see that demonstrated right now. So inside of SPY, we're looking for the same exact setup. Now inside of SPY, let's go through the same setup one more time. We breach our volatility box models and inside of SPY, we get even deeper into the clouds. We've talked about this with the stock models An entry at the outer edge of the clouds is what we call the at the edge entry. 
The At The Edge entry is one of those rare entries where you get to risk one for a reward of two. And that was the setup we had today inside of the S&P. That was the setup the live scanner found inside of the S&P. So that's what we're looking for with the hourly models. A little bit deeper of a breach here, looking for the outer edge and then looking for a bounce up. If you use the edge signal confirmation, you have the same exact setup, our fade setup that we just detailed in the futures models. Only differences in the futures models, we're looking at the cyan line for an entry. In the stock, we're using the beginning of our stock hourly models, the clouds, to try and get a slightly deeper entry, a better entry for a better bounce here. Given that we have a lot more candidates, a much larger universe of symbols to pick and choose from when this volatility accelerates. So there you have it, a quick difference between SPY and ES, or rather the futures and the stock models, particularly the hourly models. What I'm hoping you took away from today's video is the stark contrast, the contrast between the five futures models, and in today's case, we were just on the scalper, our most aggressive model for the S&P, which allowed us to capture both the long and the short. With the stock models, we took a look at both the at the edge along with the fade setup entry. If we load in the daily models here, you'll see S&P did not get remotely close to the daily models. It was just the hourly models inside of our stock volatility box that we actually breached. So take your pick, stocks, futures, choose the asset class. But in both cases, I'm hoping this gives you a very clear demonstration of how to use these volatility box models to give you an instant framework to trade either the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, whatever asset class, whatever futures market, whatever index market, whatever stock you like to trade. You can use the models to help you figure out what are the exact levels you'd like to get long or short and use those to your advantage. I hope you found today's video to be helpful. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in our next update.